All right. Hopefully that will help. Okay. Let me just start over. Well, actually, I'll just add, I'll read the other thing. Um, the comments from a public on agenda items. Just a reminder for those members of the public in attendance, this is one of two opportunities afforded members of the public to comment on required by agenda items. And the public has an opportunity at the end of the agenda. Noted on our agenda, we do appreciate our cooperation. And once again, you can go to DOE comments at madams.org to submit your question. And we have an evening, uh, we have a the time at the end of the evening to the questions are right now. I'm going to go on to approval of the minutes. Are there any questions about the previous two meetings that we had? No. Any corrections? If not, can I get a resolution, please? Be resolved the Board of Education accept the minutes of July 10, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Six months. Not used to that. Uh, 2019-2020 audit. Upon recommendation of the audit. Yeah. Yep. Walter for signing back. Thank you for keeping me on track. Uh, business matters. We have a couple of discussion items. We have the build this new building project that we just began on. That is the one, and we have with us tonight um, representatives from CSR, Scott Wilson, and Jason from Burning Office, and we are, I would like, in a very good place with our building project and uh, being able to move forward, uh, but I'm going to turn it over, and I want to make sure the camera is on them, so bear with me for a second. All right, there's the gentleman in question. All right. So I um, I think we'll start with Scott and, and your financial report, um, and then we'll have Jason chime in. And certainly, if there are questions from members of the board, I did provide some information in my update this week, but I think this will kind of bring that all together, um, shine a nice light on where we are at right now, um, and what we need to do moving forward to ensure that we get the aid flowing and and move on with the nice complete building. Right. So thank you. With that, you'll um, look around you. You see things are kind of back in order. You know, we're sitting in a, in a, in a room that had carpet replaced. It wasn't part of the original plan, and that's complete as long as well as a lot, a lot of the uh, corridors to uh, replace the design flooring there. It uh, wasn't part of the original plan. So we took advantage of this to see the bill's comments to me earlier tonight. That uh, we had the luxury of time to execute these additional items that would have otherwise been a little bit more logistically challenging. You know, had they been in, in a normal course of things. So <clears throat> right now the status is that the all the prime contractors are substantially complete. In fact, in that yellow envelope that we have your signature are uh, certificates of substantial completion that will be filed with the contractors and state education department. I believe there's some other also some other corresponding documents in there as well too. Um, but the all respective disciplines um, from the design team have been out here in the building to go through the building and generate uh, punch lists. For contractors to be working on, we expect between the next 20 to 30 days, we'll be putting those fine food uh, together. Um, we were fortunate enough to actually have at the last minute um, received the outstanding casework for this year's work, which we a week ago said we're not going to get it. We're going to have to put temporary measures in place, and it, it came. Um, so we're in a very good place on a progress level. Uh, the building is, is uh, completely turned over to the owner, to the district for use uh, in the, um, the working with the custodians and, and moving things around and setting things up has been really kind of easy peasy this year by comparison to some of the hair on fire, you know, uh, deadlines we, we, we I sent the previous. board a picture earlier this week of where we were mid-July last year with the fire line. So. Pictures of thousand words. <laughs> yes, it is. I just got a text also that people are still having a hard time hearing, so I don't know if it's 
I think it's proximity to the microphone. So if we could ask whoever is speaking, maybe to step up to the microphone, that would be helpful or move your chair closer. Um, so I'm, I'm part, part way through my, my introduction here on where we're at. So, or conclusion of where we're at rather, all, all the rooms are outfitted uh, and put it to, to use, as I said. The financial snapshot that you saw in your packet is uh, limited to four pages this time instead of five. I've omitted the summary sheet because this is where Jason's information is going to come in. He's been collaborating recently uh, for the final cost of the project and where we're at. So he's going to be able to capture that element of it. But I'll run through it real briefly. On page one, you see all the reconciled contracts to date. This is in real time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, you might notice that the uh, contract five, the plum plum DPI plumbing, uh, piping, the plumber, is um, only at 88% paid, a little bit lagging compared to the other primes. That's because of, in recent weeks, we've added some scope to their work, replacing water coolers that were uh, beneficial to the students and staff in the building. And that was one of those things that we had to wait for, lead time-wise, uh, that Bill and I were talking about earlier. So that would explain why those numbers are what they are. Uh, understanding that you're getting towards a 95% paid state at this point, leaving what's called retainage on the back end of the once the punch lists are completed and signed off on, then the, those final uh, applications for payment. Pages two, three, and four are the respective chain. Um, on page two, you'll see that there were four items, oh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, added to the general construction contract. On page three, you will see that there was only one item processed since last time. And that was um, processing a credit for an unused contingency allowance that was in the mechanical contract back on page four. You'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, um, one of the water coolers that I was just talking about uh, in the plumbing contract and in fire protection, the sprinkler folks, there again was a return of an unused in contract contingency allowance to the district. Um, so those are the changes since last time. Uh, bringing us to what I would normally get into the reconciled values of the overall budget. And at that point in time, if there are no questions, I'll let Jason pick up the summary from there. Um, yeah, this, I think Marie provided this sheet to everybody yep. ahead of time, right? Yep. So, um, as, and on big picture, Beth. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Scott was mentioning, um, kind of in place of the summary that they've been providing monthly, we've uh, kind of taken that and put that into a, a different format that we use kind of in uh, tied to the final cost reporting a lot. Um, here, and then as we get down to the end here, it would be helpful to take a, a closer look at the incidentals and see exactly kind of where you stand with the budget, uh, kind of updating some of these final budgets so on the top half of the page, we have the construction contracts. You know, as Scott was going through, you guys are in really good shape. You're, you know, pretty much 90% plus complete with all those. So that's good because we want to be able to do those final cost reports by this December. Uh, so you have to have the substantial completion documents in, which it sounds like those are pretty much there. And then we have to have everything paid in full so we can do those final cost reports to get the aid flowing. Um, so that's all in good shape. And then really on the incidental side, we kind of went through and went through all the lines with a, a fine tooth comb to see, you know, is there anything else out there looming? And it really came to the conclusion that there wasn't much uh, left on that side, except for the closeout of um, CS Archer's contract. And then our final um, few invoices for the uh, closing of the final cost reports and everything. Um, so there, there wasn't too much, but we just left a little in those budgets to get those closed out. So really what, what it comes down to is that um, second highlighted line on the top half of the page, that's kind of where we see things uh, coming in towards the end here is that you're about 171,000 under budget as things stand today. So that, that's good news, obviously you kind of, you're coming in, you got a lot of things done within the project that are great for the district and you're still coming in a little under budget. Um, so one of, the, one of the things we talked about on Friday is what do you do with those funds, you know, if you do come in under budget and you bonded it. So you know, one of the, really if that, if it's bonded and we don't spend all that money, then what that, what ultimately happens is you move that to a debt service fund. And then that can be used, you know, kind of judiciously over the next couple of years, if you'd like, kind of lower the, the tax impact of the project on the residents. You don't want to use it all at once because that can wreak havoc on, wreak havoc on your tax cap. Um, but if you kind of use it 
with a kind of nice plan over the next you know five to seven years and we can kind of you know drop the impact on the tax levy for the residents while also kind of keeping that tax levy nice and managed um, and nice and flat if that's how you'd like to go. And if I can hop in there, you know that we had already asked Bernie Donegan's office to do a five-year fiscal projection to us, which we went through last year with the intent that they would come back and have further conversation with us each year. We've talked to Jason and that's going to happen either at our October or November meeting. So that those dollars can be part of that conversation moving forward. Yep. Right. So we can definitely, you know, factor that in and, and kind of show an example of what that might look like in terms of, um, you know, moving those dollars over the debt service fund and then utilizing them for that purpose. Okay. So I'm understanding that there's a need for us not to proceed for any of any additional work totally understand that, but is there, is there the ability to Aid, or is this just something that, that think about Can I speak to that a little bit? Because mm -hmm. we did talk about furniture. Um, so the type of thing where there's no project, right? Right. So most of those things we talked about would not be aidable. Furniture right now with the way we have to um, set up classrooms, I'm not sure it would be. And I don't want to spend money just to spend money because no, we, no, have we have it um, left. Um, So I think there's a couple of factors. What can we spend money on wisely that we can use right now? And also we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we miss a date because we're making a purchase that can't come to fruition by the time we have to do a project. So I think we're pretty much at that line of demarcation in the sand based on our conversation Friday, that to look at further spending of the existing monies could put us in jeopardy of not closing out on time and not getting the aid flow. And I'm not sure that's the chance we want to take. No, no, I understand. I know that we thought about having a project without COVID to wrap on October 31st and getting applications after that. I understand. I just thought I would put it out there as a question and we know when there's no aid. Right. But just because it's not aidable, if the money's already been approved and is there, I mean, if there was something that was, hey, we should do this, is there anything on that scope? Is so again, it would have to be approved by SCB, correct? So there's a process there. And right now, Bill, let's say we ordered all the furniture we wish we could have, which is what we get left. I don't have a place to put it right now. Can we have some other furniture? We black out the pencil? I don't think we can get. I don't think well, we can get it done in time. Wasn't that part of the Black House work part of the site? The problem with the tax force was it was making the gate uh, uh, adaptable as well at the entrance. So you're configuring the fencing, the approach, part of the court, the resurfacing itself. It's not just the asphalt. Um, and the problem is with every slope is one. Just depending on the camp is what I was on Friday is should we do that now? Understand that from it hitting the fan again, it can change everything. We might not be able to complete things in the time frame, time table necessary for these to do work, which has been the kind of the impetus all along to make sure that we achieve that December close. So my recommendation would be, unless you have a very very strong 110 percent in, we have to do this. That it be able Make my comment of the day, right? Again, because if, if, if we don't close out by December this year, then that's about 190,000 in the current year that's going to get right, bumped out, bumped out yeah. 15 years. So, right. they didn't have to say anything, you can just say, well, we can add some roof signs or something like that, something literally available. That's one thing, but you're talking about manufactured items versus any entertaining something that's in this site work component, you know, varying degrees of. And I'd love to get as much out of it as we could, Billy. You know that, but at the same time, that cost benefit analysis, and at the same time, too, hearing Jason talking about being able to offset the impact of the taxpayers over the next several years when we really don't know what the next several years is going to look like to our taxpayers. I think there's some benefit to doing that as well.
I mean, we're, we're if I'm wrong, but it's safe to say that we've actually kind of gone through the process of thinking about what else do we need to get done in COVID wise. And hence the replacement of the water cooler just recently uh, that all the legislation do so. So we really have to come to a final point. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train. <laughs> um, and, and you know, to Dan, what I got to point earlier, I had in front of me the final completion certificate, which I was signing it back then. That will then allow Jason to move forward with his work, to close out the project, move those monies that remain into the debt service fund. And I remind the board too, it was that existing debt service fund back in 2015 that allowed us to really take the first step with this project. Um, and we have all learned through this process, I think, that it's projects aren't one and done for school districts. Um, we will need to come back to the table again and moving forward as we are now is going to position us well to do that and with great consideration to the impact it will have on our taxpayers. Well, the other, the other thing I would just add to is that we right now on the uh, request for the district have submitted a waiver form to the state education department for the building commission survey. And the only reason that something like that would be granted is if you have done enough renovation, significant renovation in your building itself. So we feel like it will be granted because we've done solid work here for the past seven years now. So you're setting yourself up. This project is set, set yourself up right to manage everything going forward. So, guarantee yet, we feel pretty confident. And that waiver is not to forego. It used to be every so many years, and now they just picked your year. Yeah. And we got picked for this year, which seems like a silly time to do it when everything is as it should be. Right. So, we're buying ourselves a little time so we can really do a thorough building condition survey once everything is wrapped up with this project. I think we are set. Do you guys mind saying to the change letters? I know they're all owner owner requested, except the credits. We'll give you credit for those this time. Um, but just in case I don't do them justice and they are coming up short. Anything else for Jason? That was a long ride for a short conversation. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Nice to be back in person. Yeah, it's good to see faces, you know? Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my battery's running out. That's not good. Uh, let's see how low we are. Hey, Jen, can you go grab my backpack out of my office and then I can plug it in? All right, I think we can go ahead, Jen. All right, we're going to move on to business office for information. Warrants uh, here, both of the information for warrant numbers 6, 7, 9, and 10, fund A, and warrant numbers 3 and 4, fund H, for the month of August 2020. Uh, we also have uh, business office for approval. Um, as well as budget transfers for August 2020. Are there any uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. I was hoping someone could just help me out or walk me through what I'm missing here. Uh, it's warrant for H41 on The last two pages, right? So the void check and reissued on the next page. Well, the first page was issued and the second page shows the void check. Can you just tell me what numbers are being paid because the amounts, they're different people, different amounts on different pages, but it seems to be the same check numbers. The only void was the
All right, ask her if we're back on though. We want more maps to do. Okay, we are still recording. So that is good. Uh, she says she can see us. Yes, ma'am. All right, I think we're back in action. Thank you, Jen. I still have three attendees on. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we are clarifying some business office questions. First report in that I realize it was the state of the so I told you that I knew yeah, it came off with some weight. It was issued on the second page of the report, but I told you that the bottom part of the day. No, help me out because two pages, right? On mine, I got a front and back, one has the uh, the order of plane report signature, the other one doesn't. So which page is the first because issue? I, I ran it here. Right. The two. Then I realized before anything was done that it was the wrong vendor. So then I avoided it and reissued it to correct that. And that's the page. You were able to reissue it with the same check number? Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Now, can I get a resolution, please? Be the of the board of the board of education of the the city school district through the enclosed, enclosed budget transfer for August 2020. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Move on to treasurer's report. Those are the treasurer's report for the month of August 2020. Are there any questions? If not, can I get a resolution? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Nancy and Free School District approve the treasurer's report for the month of August 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. I see there's a person uh, online. <laughs> uh, 2019 2020 audit. Upon recommendation of the audit committee, that the Board of Education may accept the 2019 2020 district external audit as completed by Western Company. Western Company is present to address the board as needed. Are there any questions about the audit? And we have that meeting prior to this meeting. Okay. <laughs> What's that? I missed the meeting. So it was a clean audit. Okay. Uh, if not, I get a resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menangian Free School District accept the 2019 2020 district external audit as completed by Weston Company. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution <laughs> carries. We will move along to 2020-2021 tax warrants. Proposed resolutions for the tax warrant and assessed valuations and calculations to be approved and signed by the Board of Education. I have a question. Can someone explain what a parada exemption payback is? Yep. It's it's somebody's taxes. But someone's taxes that. Or reassess and it's put on their tax bill. So we deduct it from the tax rate 
when we calculate it and then it gets added back into the work. So something through the year that um, the assessment so like changes. somebody wants their exemption. Okay. Right? Okay. Somebody wants their exemption. Yeah. Actually, property they lost their exemption so they had to make up the difference was this one person one, or company one, or, or is this a one there was one one there was two actually one was a residential and one was on okay uh, the, Turkish, the Turkish community center oh, yeah. yeah wasn't familiar with the term but i had to ask i had no idea what that meant Thank you. I get a Be it resolved that the Board of Education of Nancy and the School District of Cruz Rose 2020 2021 tax fund in the amount of $6,941,247.25 and $139,013. Manance Library added $9,152.06. Proata exemption payback at $11,947.20 additional star savings. The net amount to be collected on this warrant shall be $7,141,436.10. Taxes funded by our pension are $233,747.24. This warrant is effective after it is properly signed by the majority of the Board of Education. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Jack, this sure. is the one you all have to sign, so nobody leave without signing this tonight. Sure. 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 Uh, change orders. All right, I'm going to run down them because I know they will likely be Um. All right, so if we start at the top of page four of the agenda, the uh, 055 for bunk off that was associated with the removal of the risers in the old music room and the replacement of the knee wall. 56 bunk off um, that was to extend additional counter space at the school entrance for um, when parents are coming in and having to process paperwork. Uh, 57 bunk off is was repairs again at district request to existing renovated areas to address what were existing conditions. 58 was painter re painting requested by the owner. Um, and that was when we got to the point where our guys were now going back full time to addressing, preparing the building for um, re-entry of students. We deferred that painting to bump off. Uh, five, nine, was the big one which you are all aware of is the storm drain out back. And I have to say since that's been completed and we've had some significant rain, we have not had one puddle back there. Um, 60 for bunk off was um, to take the flooring to those places that wouldn't have the new flooring and make the flooring uniform throughout the building. 61 was additional owner requested painting. 62 had to do with uh, door frame hardware to existing doors again to align with keying. Um, there's a couple in here. BPI number 16 is one of them that has to do with changing the bathrooms to touchless fixtures in light of what we're dealing with now. Uh, 17 for BPI has to do with drinking fountains in the 3 5 wing. Um, 18 BPI is the addition of the middle school water fountain. Uh, BPI 19 is the changing of staff bathrooms to touchless as well. Uh, BPI 20 has to do with the replacement of the K2 water fountain, fountain with the bubbler or the touchless. DLC electric 45 is additional wiring needs in the district office. And then the credits, Mazone 08, the unused uh, plumbing heating contingency, and RBM was the unused contingency for the sprinkler system. And I got a resolution for the change orders if there are no further questions. It was all the Board of Education and the Manhattan Street. On the recommendation of the 
finish hereby approve the following changes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, I think we have three outstanding change orders back, so we're almost done. Okay. All right, personnel matters, appointment. Uh, first, the building substitute, Rachel Hawks. Can I get a resolution, please? Do you have a thought of the board of education of the man who is the only person approved to be signed by the building substitute effective 91 through 630 as per the negotiated resolution? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank be resolved that the Board of Education of the Management Street School District approved Jean Marie Calderon as a substitute custodian, lunch aid, and fireball worker for the 2020-2021 school year as per the approved salary schedule. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, early mention teacher aid, uh, Dana Payne. Can I get a resolution? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District accept the verbal resignation from Dana Payne, resigning from her position as the Assistant Dean of the Manan Junior School District, effective immediately. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries uh, homework club tutors. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District approve the following homework club tutors for the 2020-2021 school year. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. We want the mentor. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District approve the following mentor. Second. All favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries in the long board of education matters. CSE, CPSC recommendations. Can I get a resolution, please? Be resolved that the board of education of the management district will be CSE, CPSC recommendations as submitted. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries without the gavel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, substitute teacher fully clear. I get a resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Nan Senior Free School District approved the following substitute teachers for the 2020-2021 school year as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, two matters. Class size update as of the 10th. Copy. Uh, Superintendent Thomas, got a couple here. So um, the board has, has been having some discussion about having a retreat. I think the timing to do so um, is really appropriate. Um, we are in a year like no other. We are dealing with some things that we have not dealt with before. Um, in addition to that, in light of COVID and other, um, you know, out there things going on in the communities, both locally and nationally, um, certainly seeing a light shown on inequity um, and the opportunities that kids have. We historically have taken a look at our, our annual goals and the progress that we have made and, and rolled those forward. We may wish to take a deeper look at our, our goals in light of some of the things we are living through right now. Um, the uncertainties around finances that we touched on a little bit tonight. Um, and I, I think it would be in our interest to do that before mid the end of the calendar year. Um, I, I would look to October or November 
I would almost suggest we heard that Jason will be coming back to give us an update on our five year financial plan. That perhaps if he does that in October, we might want to look at November as having a time for the board to come together um, to have some conversation. That said, I don't know if you want me to open that up for conversation now um, or if you want to have a subsequent conversation with the board around that. Well, it's something that we've talked about for a while and kind of fine tune and then COVID hit and then put on the back part. But now we're right at the, at the end of our capital project, you know, max, you know, we fine tune our strategic plan and we can try to do this side, you know, whether we're coming out of COVID or not, we think about our financial picture. Um, and we've got a building um, survey coming up again. So we're well kind of looking to. Okay, we've done this capital project, even though another capital project may not be out there for three to five years. So we have to start thinking about that. What are our priorities for that? So really taking for that to, to look at the strategic plan and in the direction that we would like to take the care of collectively um, as a district um, during very uncertain times. So that if we start that planning and conversation now, I think that would be a very prudent thing going about, um, you know, not getting hit with something that we didn't expect. We have had those conversations about this building that that or agree with that direction, something else that you would like to add, or you know, I agree. We've been talking about it for a little while. I think it's kind of I would like to go forward with that. It's a new world we need to take a look at our goals. We're going to have some good data too, right? Come on, the building project. We'll have data We'll have a good foundation. Also, we'll have to go and some of us maybe going through the uh, commercial the board conference in October to the last part. There actually is a strategic planning session at that. So. So we'll work to schedule that then for November and we'll gather input from all members and, and the data that we talked about as we plan that. And just knowing that there's an election coming up that may change some policies, et cetera. Um that's not good for us. Um but um that will certainly dictate a bit as well, even though we may not have the outcome of that election for a couple of seconds. Well, everybody agrees that we should The other item I have on my list, just to, to make the board aware, I have been contacted by SAGE, which I think most of you know is where I did my master's work and my doctoral work. They have asked me to be part of a commission with um, a Dean's Commission on Educational Leadership um, and to sit as one of the several local superintendents who will sit on that board. And my, it is my intent to do that in October. Hope that I will be able to give some valuable insight into the lives that we leave uh, boots on the ground, but also the potential to take something away from that, that I can bring back that will benefit us. They have also asked me to, and I have done this in the past, um, one of the pieces of the program that I went through for my doctoral work is taking each person who goes through that program and partnering them with a mentor from the field. And they've asked me to serve as a mentor for one of the incoming folks, and I will be doing that as well. Um, Please don't think that will take away from my work here. That is in addition to, and again, I think both of those opportunities also give me the opportunity to learn and grow more and bring things of value back to the district. Ms. Canabo, that's a little comment. As you know, we get our staff back for four days last week. We were incredibly grateful for the additional two days. Um, the teachers were hard at work, I think probably every minute they were in the building, preparing for remote and in-person instruction, getting acclimated to our new technology and our camera systems and the different platforms that they were using. Um, we were able to accomplish on Thursday and Friday a parent pickup um, that the teachers put the materials for. I think that most of our students, I think we had four uh, set the materials up in the middle school and six sets in the elementary school for our online learners. We got all of those materials out. And that was quite the undertaking to the department and our staff to get all of those materials organized. 
and make sure that they were in a really good place for kids to come pick them up, and then also had some direction so they knew what to do those first couple of days. Um, one of the highlights I would say of the week is a couple of our staff members created a technology resources page for our families that is live on our right now. Um, and then last but not least, our special thank you for team. They were incredible. They jumped in and did everything from self their cleaning bins to make signage. Um, they really were just like, tell us what you need and we'll we'll help get the building ready. So a busy four days. Um, we went by like a whirlwind. It was hard to believe that we got all of that done. But uh, the staff was uh, in a really good place and welcomed students back. Our opening day with students today, we were grateful to invite a little bit over 160 students back to school with us. There was definitely a buzz outside to feel a drop off between parents and students and just excited to be back. Um, they spent their day with their teachers, getting reacclimated, seeing each other, um, excited to be in the next grade level, and just really, really happy just to be back at school. Um, our teachers that worked with our online learners had an incredible turnout. Um, and they were had a lot of success signing in, and again, a lot of the same kind of getting to know you and just making our way back in. So we had a very successful day with students today. Um, I have to say our safety and health protocols were very well um, received by both our families and our students and our teachers. Um, students did a great job with their masks and their masks. I uh, hope you have a great second day. It was awesome having this here today. I, I can't even tell you. Well, on the flip side, um, also came on today with a huge power. We were just so excited to be back. And we were trying to be six months. So um, kudos to, to everyone. That guy with the telltale sign to me when she came home with a big smile, I think. You know, like I said, I think we're going to be cool. That was definitely. You know, I'm a little nervous, a little excited, but, but uh, I'm glad everything went well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, miscellaneous, uh, just to piggyback on what Mr. Jones said, I just wanted to welcome everyone back. Thank you to this all staff, really, just for your extraordinary efforts over the last six months. <laughs> welcoming people back virtually and in person all the efforts through a building project through COVID. Um, you know, we've been through a lot. I was really glad to see everyone back today. Um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, of course. We're going to work through some things because we have to do natural person. But uh, it's nice to see everybody back in the kudos on behalf of the board. Um, to all of the board and all staff for the last six months. Uh, and you're continuing back. So, piggyback on that. So, I was going to thank uh, the staff again, right? Because it's new for everybody. No one knows how to do it. You're trying to figure things out as you go. And, and, and it had to have been uh, mind boggling to make things happen. And you can't even imagine, unless you're in the school system, what it takes to make it happen. So, we want to thank everyone for that. Uh, I want to thank Ms. Canavo specifically. Uh, well, one, welcome as a new principal into the new role during COVID where half the students aren't in school, right? So I'm sure you also had a, a very uh, interesting and unique time getting up to speed. We thank you for that. I personally want to thank you for the response and emails um, and the teachers in the middle school wing because I was very confused on, well, let me, let me say that I was concerned about sending my kids to school and then confused about, well, if I do, what is the plan? Um, and so my all my questions were answered more than timely. Uh, I have nothing but good to say about everyone in the school. Uh, and I welcome back to the school man teacher also. Um, quickly, right? There's 15 days left to fill out the census. If you haven't done that, fill out your census. We sent notices. Um, the school, the village, and the PTA have been involved in a grant. Money's been spent. We've been mailing stuff. There's signs all through the village. Fill out your census. I don't know what else to say. Call your census. Family, it's going family. to save you money in the long run. You won't know the census that cost you more taxes. Call your census. That's all I can say. Thank you. So we're
fact that in the elementary school, kids also had a very good day, so not to do <laughs> And he said we were supposed to do five subjects today, we only did math, but it was an awesome day. Okay, I, I did a good first day. Else. Long um, informational material. Our next board meeting is Tuesday, October 13th at 3 p.m. That's because the holiday. Yes. Uh, public comment. Please note during the public comment session, you don't need to continue to ask the board on agenda and non agenda items. The board president may want to mark speakers who sign on the topic I need to be Remarks. Does anybody not check out the I just checked at the top. Just the earlier comment about it's difficult to hear what's being said. And I will say for the public, we will mute the meeting and turn the video off. I do not anticipate um, we will return to any public session. However, you're more than welcome to stay on in the event that we did. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, let me mute us and All right, so we need a motion to re enter public session. Oh, yeah. Adjourn executive session. All right. Um, Chief Judge Lee, I make a motion to adjourn executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Executive session is adjourned. And we need a motion to re enter public session. I make a motion to re enter public session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in public oh, session. Oh my God! Huh? We need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thank you